subtracting and multiplying by fractions. So um, the, the multiplying is, is great because it is just times the tops times the bottoms as we looked at yesterday. So this thing here, right? That's why I love my board. Just times across, times across. And when we have a simple situation like this, right? You just times the tops together. So three times minus five gives you the minus 15. X times X gives you the X squared, four twos are eight. All good, all good. Are we happy with that? You don't have to write any of this stuff down if you think you already know it. If you go, I wanna have a notes page and come back and refer to it, then by all means, knock yourself out and write it down. When we come to the next one, this is where we should have a little bit of fun because I don't want to have to work out what four times 36 is unless I really, really have no other choice. Right? So this is where we can do that cancelling. So who can remind us, how would you explain to someone how we can cancel fractions when we've got a multiply there? Do you remember? Eric? Yes, highest common factor, good. Well done, absolutely. I'm more sort of asking about legally, how do we do it? It means you can cancel vertically. So is there a number that goes into four and into 27? And in this case, it's not. But you remember back in the olden days, probably in year eight, if you had something like 10 over six, we could cancel that because two, as Eric said, is your highest common factor and it would be five over three, agreed? Mm -hmm. So that's what we mean, you can cancel vertically. Can we do any other canceling? Yeah, we can also do diagonal cancellation. All right, the only thing you're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to do horizontal. That's not allowed. So what does that mean? It means, let's look at this 27. Is there, an, and the 36, is there a number that goes into 27 and 36, the highest one possible? Nine. Um, so I can say, uh, let's have a change of color. I can say nine goes into 27 three times. Nine goes into 36 four times. Is there anything else, Rian, that we can cancel? That's why you gotta pay attention. You know how to do this because you were chatting. You don't know what I was just talking about. So we can see diagonally the X squared and the X. So when I look at an X squared, I see X times X. So one of those X's right, is gone with that one downstairs. Do we agree? Yeah. So, oops, now we can just times the top. 4X, you've still got this X here, don't forget. So 4X times 4 is 16X. And at the bottom, you've got 3 times 1, which is just 3. Now, if you're writing tiny midget me, this is going to be really hard to see. So start using those squares nicely, fill up the whole square, leave a couple of gaps in between and maybe get another um, colour. What you will see shortly is that we're going to have bigger ones with fractions, so it won't be a, a problem. The other thing we might not have got to, but that is about dividing. Ooh, dividing fractions. Oh, maybe go orange. Yeah, that looks good. Um, simple, you keep the first one, replace the divide with the times and then flip. Are we happy? Okay. Now, for homework, and I was really pleased to see the people that I looked at, so just a little bit of random, they had done exercise 4C. All good? Were there any issues? I've added O and P just in case. So was M okay with people or not? For B.2, okay. Okay, good, good. So some people hadn't done. I thought you had. It's all right, my bad. So if we look at this, was 4B okay? Yeah. So if we look at this, if this is a simple matter. I wouldn't even waste your pens. Don't waste your pens or pencils because this is just going to be times the tops, times the bottom. So X times Y is XY. 2 times 5 is 10 and we are done. Seriously. Did we need to write that down? Correct, I'm with you. Ah. If we look at E, what do you want to do there? What do we notice? 
Pardon? Diagonal. Diagonal. Right. So we can actually go, there's a C there and there's a C there. So I'm allowed to cancel that. So that now becomes, when I cancel, C goes into C once and once there. Do you have to write the ones? Not if you don't want to and you're not going to make a mistake. So now one times one is one, five times one is five. Let's say Ash was just chatting, 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 and he just went along and he went, oh, C times one, he got C, five times C is C. He would then go, oh, yeah, cancel, cancel, and he'll get the same answer. So, but obviously, if you can cancel first, less work for you. Agreed? I'm not going too fast. You're very silent. That's either you've got it or I'm just confusing the pants of you. We okay? All right. Um, talk to me about the next one down. Is that an I? That's an I. Who's going to talk to me? Yes, Paris. Once again, you can cancel out diagonally. So I'm looking at this M squared and I actually see that is M times M. So that M is going and that squared is going. So that leaves me with one over m times 2, 2m. Two Groovy? Don't get too cocky because this is just warming up. <laughs> What's the tick uh, or the trick with m? No trick at all, but hopefully you are seeing this as 3 over m squared times m over 1. Especially, hopefully this lesson we might get to look at adding fractions, or we will be looking at adding fractions. So when we have something where it's just a plain old number or letter, always see that it's over 1. And we do the same thing that we did before, the m and the squared, so we are left with 3 on m. All good, all good, all good? Have you done this or you're just going, I know this and not writing? You've done? Oh, sorry to enter. Have you done the next bit? Wait. Oh, you can go on, do adding fractions. Okay. Um, squaring. I think what the textbook is checking or asking you to do is go, that's 2 over x times 2 over x. So we get 4 over x squared. Personally, I'm using my index rules and I know that everything in this bracket gets the squared. So I'm saying 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared. Yeah? But you get the same answer regardless. As I said, I am going quick because I don't think you have to write a lot of this down. All right, P, I put that up there because it's 3. Well, same, same thing. A, A cancels. Anything else? Yep, B, B. So we're left with 1 over C. I'm being bold and I'm saying you don't have to do, and sorry, I forgot your name. Audrey. Audrey, I'm so sorry, but I'm about to say to the class, you don't even have to do question two. Why? It's the same thing. It's only one new thing, and that is replace the divide with the times, flip, and this is exactly what we just did in question one. Cancel, cancel, three over two. Yeah? Okay? All right. So, is anyone other than Audrey, sorry, there are others, but have we done question three of this exercise? So, again, good others. You may just continue on. We're looking at adding and subtracting fractions. Oh. Yeah, I can't give you the assignment yet. Okay. Now, these are the examples from the textbook that we're going through, and I suggest that we probably do write these down. So you should have today's date. If you want, you can put examples, put a little box around it so you know to go back and have a look if you want your book, but it needs to be organised. All right, so this is where we're pulling together everything that we know now. We're looking at the top. And what is the question that we should be asking ourselves? 
is there a common factor. So we're just looking at that top line. We're getting to the cancelling soon, right? Is there a common factor? Yep, what is it? Why? <laughs> I'm tempted to say because I've asked you, but no. We've done that joke over and over. So we pull out the Y, what goes in the bracket? Y minus 1. Okay, and we're done there. We look at the denominator. Can we do anything at the moment with that Y take 2? If we're Russian, we say NIET. What do we do with that top line on the second, the, the numerator on the second fraction? Yes, we pull out the common factor of 3. So 3, y take, oh, what a surprise, 2. Without even looking at the denominator of the other one, do we think or have an inkling of what the common factor or what the factor might be? I think there might be a y take 1 coming up, don't you think? Anyway, what is our common factor for the denominator? Higher. Someone said two. I could hear two. What's the height for? We always want the highest. So y take one. And if you had pulled out two as a common factor, you're not wrong, right? But you have to then keep going. So you'd always look and you go, still look inside the bracket. You can see there's another common factor. Pull that out again. Anyway. Okay, here comes the fun part. What can we cancel? We've got a y take one upstairs. Diagonally downstairs. Soon we're going to look at adding fractions. If this here was not a times, we would not be allowed to do this cancelling, okay? It's because that's a times there that we are allowed. Can we cancel anything else? Yep, the y take two and the other y take two. I should use a different colour. y take two and y take two. So now we are left with, on the top line, 3 times y is 3y. Just had a bit of a pause there. Oops, 3y. And on the denominator, it's just 4. Pretty simple. Practice is your common factor stuff that we did last time. Would you like me to go through B? Or am I boring you? Do B or not do B? All right, so those who said um, oh, they're fine, you should be able to read through the B, the example, and then start question three. I had some yeses, so let's do it. So you're writing down B. Be a little bit longer. All right. We notice this one's a divide one, so no mystery. We replace the divide with a times, and then we just flip that fraction. And we go through the same routine. We look at the numerator, and we say, is there a common factor? So what's our common factor for 5m take 20? Yep, 5, I can see people. Katie, okay, 5. So what's the number that goes into 5m and 20? It's got to be 5. And then what will go in my bracket? Why 1? If I put 1, 5 times 1 is just 5. I want 5m. So what does that have to be? 5 times m equals 5m. And 5 times what gives me 20? Happy with that? 4. Uh, question without notice from people. Can I just cancel the 4 and the 4 here? 4, 4, 4? Are you sure? You don't think. So a no became my I don't think. Hmm. I reckon if I keep working on you, you might change your mind. You were right the first time. Stick with your guns, okay? Because there's that times there, we're looking at that whole unit, and we know that if we had minus 4 over 4, you are not allowed to cancel because of that minus in there. So good on you. Stick to your guns. Okay, times, we've got 3. And 
And is there anything we can do with the denominator? Is there a common factor here? What is it? Um, Correct. And so we pull out that common factor, 2 times m and minus 4. And yay, that means I can cancel now this m take 4. And this m take 4. And we're left with 5 threes of 15. 4 times 2 is 8. We just do a double check. Is there any number that goes into 15 and 8? Uh, yet. So we leave it. We're done. So your call now. Oh, your turn. You are uh, just doing question three. With 3F, can I just show you, I'm just say it's on the board, there's a hint, it's in red. For those people listening on the video, I'll write the hint in a minute. Okay? With F, I don't think you have to do it for question three. You don't need to do it, but I know there's some of you out there that you, even though I say you don't have to do it, you go, but I want to. Um, the clue is, what letter was it? Was it M? M. M. The clue is that M squared take 16, top right, right? M squared take 16 actually factorizes to be M take 4, M plus 4. Now that's difference of two squares that we did la last year. I'm not expecting you to remember it. We do that a little bit later on when we do bigger expansions and factorizing. This topic is all about just pulling out common factors. So that one sort of snuck in there. So don't worry if you go, huh? No sweat. Okay. If you haven't finished, if I've interrupted you, leave a bit of a gap and you can go back and finish that. But what we want to look at is adding and subtracting fractions. All right, if you put a title, that's fine. And then you can pop your pens down because I don't think you need to write this next bit. That if we have three sevenths plus two sevenths, we can easily add them because they have the same denominator, correct? That is the same as three over two plus seven. You don't even need that step. You could have gone straight to its five sevenths. We all agree. Okay, if I had, let's say, three-fifths plus one-half, how do I add those fractions? What's the deal with adding fractions? We need, right, lowest common denominator. Fantastic. Remember that? Lowest common denominator. Now, most of the time, most of the time, the lowest common denominator you can just get by timesing the denominators together, okay? So in this case, we would go 5 times 2 is 10. And then you're asking yourself, what did I times 5 by to get to 10? Well, you had to times it by 2. So you have, what I do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And then you ask yourself, what did I times 2 by to get to 10? Well, I times it by 5. What do you do at the bottom? So this is when, some of you might remember, and you even mentioned this before, but this is when we cross multiply. So 3 twos are 6, and 1 times 5 is 5, so we end up with 11 over 10. Once again, I'm going across the page, which is hurting me just a little bit. I only normally like to have one equal sign per line. I should go down, but I'm just trying to keep things so you can see it uh, on the board. Is that okay? So we're going to do some questions with X's in them, so you don't need to copy this down, but if you want to, you know, there it is. Okay, if we had 5 over 8, hmm, let's go with a take just to mix things up a little bit. And we had over four. 
Will I be doing the cross multiplying and the times in the denominators together? Eric's shaking his head. Absolutely, Eric. Why wouldn't we do that? Uh, doesn't matter. We would do the same thing. So if this was three fifths, take, he said, is it because it's subtraction? So if it's three fifths take thing, we would still do five twos are 10. We would still cross multiply. Hey. It's just stopped. All right, we would still cross multiply. We would still get six, take five, and this time it would be one over 10. So same cross multiplying. I'm asking you for this one. I'm not going to do the cross multiplying. Anyone know why? What is my lowest common denominator here? No, because eight doesn't go into four. My lowest common denominator is eight. Eight goes into eight once, and four goes into eight twice. So this is when instead of cross multiplying, I won't do that. I'll just, what did I times four by to get to eight? Two, what I do the bottom, I do to the top. So the five sticks minus four, I get one eighth. We? Oui? The reason I did, oh, the reason I did that, so it's not because it's a minus, it's just because the denominators, I'm just mixing it up. Look what happens if I didn't look for the lowest common denominator. What's 8 times 4? 32. If we then cross multiply, 5 4s are 20. 8 twos are 16. I've now got 4 over 32. What's the number that goes into 4 and 32? 4. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 32 8 times. So I get the same answer, but I've done a lot more work and I've used much bigger numbers. So another example is if you can make life easier for yourself and use smaller numbers, please do so. It's only if the denominators can you find the lowest one. Okay? It's not always one goes into the other. Um, can I come up with some now? We'll come up with some in a minute. Okay. Well, four, oh, geez, my device is going nuts. 4D, I'm hoping we only have to do the left-hand side. Or shall we do every second? Left-hand side, all right. Let's go, left-hand side. All right, so here we go. Same rules apply. Rian, don't make me take your laptop. Yeah, but they're smiling at it, so come on. First question we ask ourselves, is it the same denominator? Clearly not. Two and three, so now we're going, what's a number that two and three both go into? Six, and we get that just by times in them together. So it's six, and now, because we times the denominators together, we can cross multiply. Because in effect, you're saying two times three gave you six, so I have to times A by three, you're cross multiplying. So three times A is three A. Wee wee. What did I times three by together? Six, two, go to the center top, so plus two A. And my friends, three A plus two A is five A, we're done. So same thing, 2 and 5, 2 times 5 gives me 10, and then I will cross multiply, and that becomes D times 5, which is 5D, minus 2 times 3, which is 6. Can we simplify that in any way, shape or form? We've got some head nods, where could we simplify, or how could we simplify? Ooh. You might have to give me 50 push-ups. We can't cancel the 5 and the 10. Why? No. If, I, if it was just 5D and 10, then yes, I can cancel that, and that's going to be D on 2, like we got here. But because now it's a single fraction and I've got this minus here, remember, we're not allowed to cancel. So that's it. We are done.
No more. Sometimes we just want to do extra work because we think that's too easy. It is easy. Enough. So do you want to try the next few? You carry on. I think you can do this without me now, yeah? Yeah. 